Okay, welcome to the uh, MFJ Palooza. So I'm trying out uh, several different things out here in the yard today. Uh, got some uh, stuff in the mail, got some replacement things, got some repair things. And so uh, I wanna show you all of the setup because uh, so far it's been uh, pretty impressive. Now, uh, I did, I was using an MFJ power supply. And so I had an MFJ 4115 power supply that I had set up previously uh, in order to uh, use it to run on the radio. Uh, the problem is that it is giving me massive uh, distortion bands uh, on the frequencies. It doesn't matter what HF frequency I go to, I'm getting massive distortion lines uh, running it. And so uh, I have now disconnected that power supply and I went to my uh, 12 amp hour uh, MIDI Go Box battery. And so just finished putting on some uh, power pole connectors on another piece of equipment. So uh, let me kind of run you through the process and show you exactly what I set up. So over here is my brand new DX Commander mast. So I was listening to the podcast, uh, Ham Radio Crash Course podcast with uh, Josh and Leah. And Josh was talking about antenna masts. Now I haven't ever had one, but I went ahead and I got the 10 meter DX Commander and I'm doing like a mic K8MRD where basically I've uh, put it up 10 meters and I just kind of leaned it up into the top of that tree. And I have my MFJ 1984 medium power uh, random wire in fed that's hanging off of that. So it's running down here. So it's up there at the top of the mast leaned up into the tree at 10 meters and then I have it running down sloping down here's the trans match down here at the bottom coax running from the trans match into a tuner uh, the other antenna that I put up for HF is my Pac-10 mini and so over here in the yard with Pikes Peak back here. I got my Pac-10 and Mini right here in the tree at about, oh, I guess that's probably six feet off the ground. And it is sloping this way and I have it clipped to some grass down here in the bottom, 29 feet long random wire. So both of those antennas are running into the back of a tuner. And so have a tuner here that was sent by MFJ. Let me see if I can get the camera around to the front. And so this is the MFJ 929. Let me turn the camera around. All right, so have the uh, MFJ 929 tuner sitting right here on the table. And so this is an auto tuner. Uh, it's able to take in uh, multiple different antennas. And right now I have uh, two different antennas hooked into it. So I have what I showed you, the trans match of the 1984 MP that's going 67 feet up here to the DX Commander mast. And then I have over there, the Pac-10 and Mini, 9 to 1, right there. Both of those antennas are feeding into the back of uh, this tuner. So let me show you uh, the back, what that looks like. So I have, again, this is from the 1984 MFJ. That is going into antenna 1. Antenna 2 is this one here. 
that one's going to my pack tenna. I then have the transmitter jumper going to an antenna switch, and that is the MFJ 1702C antenna switch. And then that's going single into my IC705. And that's a Windcamp, uh, the 705 arc uh, shield on it. And so all of this uh, MFJ stuff, the MFJ929, the MFJ1702C, the antenna, the MFJ1984MP, and even that power supply, the MFJ4115, all of those were given to me uh, by MFJ in order to test out. Um, not a big fan of the power supply. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to hold on to it for a little bit because I might find a use for it. But as far as HF, it, it really didn't work that well. Um, the Again, Antenna 1 is the uh, 1984. Antenna 2 is the pack antenna going into the switch switch into the radio on switch a i have an antenna there that i got from bridgecom it's a tri-band uh two meter 70 centimeter and the 1.25 meter or the 220 megahertz band and that's sitting there on a baking sheet and so i've got vhf uhf uh running into this splitter a is for VHF, UHF, and B is going into the tuner for the HF. Now, the one thing that I had to do, there is no radio interface cable between this tuner and an IC705. They have a bunch of other cables that fit like the 17, 7300 or the 7610 that has that white uh, adapter. This one I actually had to make. And so what I did was... I took a piece of uh, uh, Cat5 cable, went online onto YouTube, found that uh, the blue and white, the green and the brown are in slots 5, 6, and 8 of a, of a RJ45 connector. They, uh, the blue and white one is ground. The green one uh, goes to the tip, I believe, and then the brown one is the key. And I might have those two backwards, the brown and the green. And so basically I got an RJ45. I only have three cables of the eight cables that are connected. I disconnected everything else. And then I had to go in here and do the same thing with one of these stereo plugs. And so I had a stereo plug and it had a uh, tip, uh, a middle section in the ground. And so I connected each one of those uh, cables to the middle section the ground or the tip and now I have a functional tuner uh, before it wouldn't work uh, there was no adapter there's no adapter you can buy you had to make that adapter and so again like I said I went on YouTube and found it uh, right now I am on looks like I'm on antenna 2 there's uh, the Pikes Peak in the background so let's see if I can switch over to antenna 1 so I press the button, I see 1A. Uh, I have mine uh, set. I want an uh, SWR of 1.1 is what my goal is. And so let me tune off just the shade. Get over here to random frequency. There we go. Then uh, now that I have that cable that I made hooked up to the auto tuner, now I just go to the tune button, it says tuner's on, I'll hold it, it ran a tune, and it gave me uh, SWR of 1.3, forward power of, it says 12 watts, reflected power of 0.6, so basically 11.4 watts is what it's saying that it's putting out. Uh, I know that's uh, not peak envelope, that's just a value. And so, right, this guy has been in this park in Michigan. So let's see if I can hit him. Uh, 
Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee, Romeo, QRP. Roger, Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee, Romeo. All right, pretty good. So I just got him uh, QRP in Michigan. And again, uh, got a SWR. And uh, see if I can zoom in on that. Uh, tilt the camera and zoom in. Okay, is that Echo Alpha 2, Echo Tango, QSL? So I got uh, SWR right here, one to one. Uh, it's saying, of course, I was doing single sideband, so it said the forward power was two, but that's a single sideband. And so, again, uh, the radio is putting out 100% 10 watts. So I'm putting out 10 watts on the IC705. And his, uh, he's not really bumping my meter. You can see here, every once in a while, he's, uh, he's hitting the peaks, but... 5.3 is the, the highest I ever got him. See, he just hit it there. He hit a 5.3. So I think it's uh, it's just kind of going back and forth with him. It could be the same as like when I'm broadcasting my single side band. Fox, Fox, California. Mike's in Wisconsin. Uh, KC5 NPC is Hubert in Texas. He is definitely the loudest station I've heard so far. W5 PWC is in Tennessee. Anybody else here for the activity group? Alpha, Bravo, Zero, Delta, Kilo. CQ, 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 this is W6VAH, Whiskey 6, Victor Alpha Hotel, W6VAH, calling CQ and listening. All right, somebody in Maryland on 7240. Let's see if I can hear him. So I'm going to press on the numbers, go to 7 meters. Oh, my goodness. All right, so just did an auto tune, press the tune button, got a SWR1 to 1, and a forward reflective power, or forward power, again, it says 11 watts, but I know it's not 11 watts. It's Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee, Romeo, QRP, QRP. Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee, Romeo. Yeah, Roger. Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee, Romeo, QRP. Yeah, Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee, Romeo. Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee, Romeo. Okay, I think I've got Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee, Romeo, QSL. Yeah, QSL, I got you 5-3, five, 5-3, three, five, three, Colorado. 5-3 five, in Colorado. You're a little weaker here, but QRP, that makes sense. Uh, you're about a 2-2, two, two, about a 2-2. Two, two. Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee, Romeo. Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee, Romeo, QSL. All right, so it looks like so far uh, the setup right now with the battery pack seems to be working so again I have the uh, 705 here sitting on the table I just turned it to my uh, local repeater uh, I have the uh, the antenna switch in the back here set on A and that's going to my VHF antenna right there on that cookie sheet uh, I had been using antenna 1 and antenna 2 at different times so antenna 1 again is my MFJ 1984 MP and that's the transmatch and it's running 67 feet up there to the top 
of that DX Commander mast. And again, the DX Commander mast is running up 10 meters or 30 feet up into the top of the end of that tree. It's just kind of leaning up there into the tree. So, DX Commander mast uh, with the uh, end of that antenna about 30 feet off the ground. Running over to the transmatch. Then of course over here, further in the tree, I had the uh, Pactenna mini random wire, about, oh, I guess it's six and a half feet off the ground. And it was running that way, just basically clipped to a strand of grass down there on the ground. Oh, standby. <clears throat> K zero MGO, go ahead. This is K zero MGO inside of a Faraday cage. How are you doing, Mike? <clears throat> uh, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I was testing out some uh, new equipment and I uh, had set up uh, my IC705 here to the repeater and was just trying that with a uh, with a uh, tri band antenna sitting out there in the in the yard. Uh, yeah, I can barely copy you. Uh, that just barely came through. Uh, you said something about employment opportunities. I think you're talking about the incident. Okay, is this any better? Roger, Roger. I got a good copy on you there. K0FYR. Okay. I was saying we've got some employment opportunities for very low pay over here on this incident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, received. Uh, what uh, type of time frame are you looking at? Yeah, Roger, Roger. Uh, uh, let me uh, uh, check with the uh, YL, and I'll uh, get back to you for sure. Sure thing. K zero MGL. K zero FYR. Clear. So uh, they've been running uh, some radio operations uh, out at uh, what's called the uh, High Park Fire. That's uh, uh, kind of in the. Uh, southwest side of Teller County. Uh, he's asking if I might have some availability for a radio shift. And so uh, let me uh, let me check on that uh, with the spousal unit and uh, and I'll let him know. But basically I think so far this setup is working. Uh, again the IC705 you just heard it on the uh, VHF on the repeater. That's fine obviously. Uh, the DX Commander uh, was getting out. I'll have to check the uh, the map to see the locations of the three places that I got. Uh, good audio on uh, on uh, 40 meters and on 17 meters. Uh, I didn't make any contacts, but I wasn't really trying too hard. But the audio sounded great, and so I think right now everything seems to be uh, copacetic and working. Again, want to thank MFJ for uh, letting me borrow. Uh, these units, the MFJ 929, which is the the auto tuner that I've been using, uh, seems to be functioning great. Uh, again, I had to make that cable, and so that's something that you're going to want to consider if you have a 705. Uh, if you have any of the other standard radios, uh, those cables are probably uh, the cable that comes with it will probably work. I know they have a Kenwood version and a Yesu version and an Icom version. It just doesn't work with the 705, so I had to make a cable. Um, the antenna switch mfj 1702c apparently that works as well because i just switched back and forth between my hf antenna and my vhf antenna and then uh again i had the uh the my new ic705 out uh i had the new wind camp uh the arc uh 705 uh shield cage around it so kind of happy about that i got it more protected than what it was 
uh, MFJ 1984 medium power antenna again 67 foot uh, in fed uh, seems to be apparently working fine the only thing uh, I've been uh, a little bit upset about on this go around was that MFJ uh, 4115 power supply a uh, lot of noise a tremendous amount of noise on the bands and uh, I'll see if I can uh, superimpose a picture there where you could see all the uh, the noise that was coming off of it so that was uh, very disappointing on that part of it other than that all the other MFJ products working great uh, really want to say thanks to Rich over at MFJ for uh, getting me back on the air with my 705 after I had the problem with the uh, with the other tuner and so again going to try this out going to try to do a park activation coming up pretty soon uh, let me check on this fire shift and see if that's something I'm going to be able to do and then uh, other than that uh, for right now I'm going to say ham solo K0 FYR 73